So <laughs> I'm at work, honestly. And I feel like this needs to be said more than anything. And it has to be said, which is this. We are called to excel for Christ. You heard me loud and clear. Excel for Christ. In what? In what exactly? In honest, like really honestly, anything in everything that we're doing. Whatever that our hands do, whatever that, whatever action, what every anything, everything that we're doing, we are called to excel for Christ. It's so simple. It's as simple as that in our speech, in our conduct, in how we love people and his creation, in faith, in purity, and tons of other things. Each and every aspect is important and has a lot of a lot to say, honestly. But I felt so strong in my spirit to say and to impart God's word, especially in this area, which is studies. And it's not an area that many people love to talk about and not many people love to listen about. But it is as equally as important as every aspect of our lives. A lot of times we limit God with our thoughts and what we perceive. <laughs> and, you know, we have been long living on this earth, witnessing and trusting in the reality of the world and we fail to put our full faith on on who God calls us to be and too many people are living in a life of mediocrity trying to just throw stroll through work and life by doing like just the bare minimum just the bare minimum avoiding commitment accountability and responsibility wherever possible and our God, however, does all things perfectly. I mean, you would agree, right? Like everything he created, he called it good. We see in Genesis, he called whenever he created something, he calls it good. Whenever he even he created a man, he called it good. Everything he created, he called them good. Everything he created is good. And every detail from the greatest to the least, from the biggest to the smallest, is taken into consideration and completed in excellence. And if we as Christians are to reflect God, is this how Jesus is? Is this how you want people to see Jesus? It was never God's intention to create people just to live a life of mediocrity, not putting the, the special gifts of talents which were given by God to each of us to good use. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, it says, So what, wh whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. And even we see in Colossians chapter 3, verse 23, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. It doesn't say 50% or 70% or even 90%. It says full, all. Do all to the glory of God. All, with all your heart. As for working for the Lord, not for human masters. Are we not studying for the glory of God? Are we not doing what we're doing for Jesus? If we say reality of the world is the hard truth, God's truth is hard truth, whether you like it or not. Not the world's truth, not, not the harsh reality we are living in because we are too surrounded by the things of the world and we limit God. You say you're not good in studies. Okay, all right, noted. I don't care. You say you can't memorize. Okay, noted. You say you don't have the motivation to study. Okay, noted. So are you quitting just because you, you're not good in studies? Are you quitting just because you can't memorize? Are you quitting just because you don't have the motivation? And for what? Only looking at your weaknesses? Don't you think that God already knows what weaknesses you have 
And do you just want to drop something that God can use you to influence others? Are you going to limit God by drowning yourself with all the impossibilities that you are seeing with your human eyes? You haven't even seen how God is going to move in your circumstances, in your shortcomings, in all the impossibilities, and you dare to say you can't without even an ounce of effort? We are in the world but not of this world. And we are called to influence, not to be influenced. If the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? If the light loses its fire or hides itself, how can it give light to the people in the dark? If God had opened the door for you, don't you want to enter that door with confidence? If God had prepared the way for you, aren't you walking in it with boldness because Christ has prepared it? If God says he will bring us to the promised land, is he not going to prepare us so that we are able to walk into it and claim it? If we're not even putting effort into the things God put in us, how then are we going to put effort when doing God's work and carry our cross? If we're not even faithful in the little things that God assigned to us, how then are we going to be faithful in the big things that God is going to assign us? If we are like Jonah, running away from things that we don't like or situations that deem impossible in our eyes, how are we going to obey God, what he commanded us to do? Jonah ran away from God because God told him to preach and proclaim God's judgment in Nineveh. And according to history as well, Nineveh is called a sin city. And honestly, for real, if we see in from our, with our human eyes, we would think that it's useless. Our effort will be useless if we are to go in and to preach and to proclaim God's judgment. And... Really, Jonah wanted nothing to do with it. Jonah was driven by his feelings. He didn't want to go to Nineveh and he didn't want to see the city being saved. He responded to God's call with his feelings, not with his faith in God. He allowed his feelings to define God's call on him. And are you the same? When we choose to obey God, we are acknowledging that God's will is sovereign and ultimate. And when we choose to trust and obey God's will, our faith flourishes and grows deeper and stronger. When we choose to let God lead us, in which ultimately means not my way, nor my will, but yours, O oh Lord, to be done in my life, we are letting God to mold us and shape us to become more and more like Christ that we are able to enter the promised land that God has prepared for us. Transformation can only come only when we allow God to do the internal sanctification work and our lack of faith in His reality and His power only hinders Him to do the full construction work. So when we dwell in the reality of the world, we are limiting God to do greater things with our lives. We are limiting God to, to shape us to become more and more something that we couldn't even imagine we are able to do. So what are you? Are you going to continue to limit God? Are you going to continue to doubt that God is going to do much more amazing things in your life? I mean, although yes, we will say no, we won't doubt. But the thing is, our actions, our thoughts, what, where our focus is, where our heart is, it always ends up in places that are wrong. It always ends up focusing on the world and in the world. We are in the world, but not of this world, but we are called to influence the world.
So are you going to continue to dwell in the world? Are you continue, going to continue to let the world define you? Let the world set your standards and not use God's? Make your decision now. Which one are you? Going to be transformed from the inside out? Or you're just going to let it be? Which one are you? I think I'm going to do like a transcript thing and I'll post it on Instagram because I really felt that it needs to be reached out to more and more people. And this is so important to be impart it, imparted in hearts of people and especially to the youths now and also even younger than that. They need to hear the hard truth. And they need to have the yearn, the zeal, the desire of wanting God to be in their lives, to shape them more and more. So again, to end this video, which one are you? Do you want the full sanctification work of the Holy Spirit to be done? In your life and if yes what do you think your next action is what do you think you should do from now and even right now that's it people are asking for me I guess so yeah I guess this really the hard truth that not many of us would want to hear but it's important to know yes all right so that's it okay i ha i really have to go <laughs> okay